Hello, everybody. Thank you for having me here. Tonight, I want to talk about obsession with causality and how it affects our perception of the world can lead us to false conclusions and correct actions. Because you see, learning starts from observations. You make observations, you will create cause and effect chains. So for example, if you see lightning, you hear thunder, cause and effect. And these are correlations. Now these observations, they condition us. So if you imagine a Pavlov's dog, it was conditioned to expect food every single time it would hear the bell ring. But that conditioning is absolutely useless. It doesn't help it get food when it hears the bell ring. So here's the interesting thing. The conditioning was instinctual. But there's another form of condition we humans have called superstition. Superstition is a conditioning that we can get without observation. Someone can give it to us. And I'm not immune. Neither are some of the greats. For example, Michael Jordan would always wear his North, uh, North Carolina shorts and uh, his normal shorts for playing for the Bulls. Maybe explains why his greatness didn't go to baseball. He didn't wear the shorts, you know? <laughs> or greatest man of science, Albert Einstein, would have a horseshoe up on the wall, and he obviously didn't believe in it, but he was very well of the f uh, aware of the fact that you don't have to believe in it for it to bring you luck. <laughs> <clears throat> So I implied that superstition is limited to reasoning. But is that really so? Or is it something deeper, our deep instinct of cause and effect? So, or is, and is it limited to humans? Or do animals experience that as well? Well, interestingly enough, B.F. Skinner has discovered that if you feed uh, pigeons at intervals, they develop their own unique rituals, how to conjure food. Some would spin in their cage twice. Others would knock on the door. Now, these superstitious pigeons obviously have a false link, and we turn to research to look for the true links. But sometimes we get bizarre results. I mean, like, what's up with the eggs? <laughs> but what I'm suggesting, though, is that some research, <laughs> research is governed by big data. We process a massive amount of big data to find patterns, to use those patterns for correlations, and come up with cause and, a, cause and effect chains. For example, in the state of Maine, the divorce rate is correlated with the consumption of margarine. <laughs> if you're happily married, perhaps don't eat margarine. <laughs> if you like mozzarella cheese, you're a good candidate to be a civil engineer doctor. <laughs> but let's be serious, because this next one is a bit concerning. There seems to be a relationship between U.S. oil imports and chicken consumption. What oil does the secret recipe of KFC use? <laughs> but, all right, so obviously these correlations are clearly fault, no causality link. But sometimes we uh, attribute causality to less obvious chance events, like Bill Miller's personal success. He was once named the greatest money manager of our time for having beat the market for 15 years. But if we think about it, we should have, uh, it's almost inevitable that a fund manager would have beat the market for 15 years in the past 40 years out of all of them. So is his success really attributed to his personal strength or is it just luck? Especially considering that the following years have been went so great. Or if we turn to sports, many athletes uh, have suffered poor performance seasons after going on the Sports Illustrated cover. Now, the Sports Illustrated is not over 15 years. The choice is much uh, narrower. It's higher influenced by luck. But what about negative luck? <laughs> Leonardo DiCaprio is one of the most consistent performers. He has been nominated for Oscars and expected to win numerous times. But Lady Luck wouldn't have it so. Now, also, consider this. His loss was a couple Oscars. Bill Miller's loss was his finances. So this is a black swan event. Because if you bet, all your fortune on the white swans, and you're, then you leave yourself completely uh, exposed to the unexpected black swan event. Because the point is not to be risk averse, but to limit your exposure to the unpredictable events, the black swan event, that can have irreversible impact. See, life is not necessarily predictable. You won't find a causality chain to predict it. So let chance and randomness in, Put all your effort in, limit your exposure, and if you want to achieve success, just double your failure rate. Thank you very much.